26 names at the bottom. That's a lot of Labour MPs. Is this some kind of coded threat? No, not a threat. I think the 26 Labour MPs who signed that letter and many others who've privately shared their concerns with me have been saying the same thing for a long time now. We won a, gen uh, we won a situation in 2017 where we didn't win the election, but we returned... Uh, better than we thought, and we did so on the promise of respecting the referendum and working to get a good deal. And those of us who signed this letter and others believe that we should respect that promise. Okay. And, and that is what has been Labour Party policy, and that is what is meant to have guided us through Parliament. For those people watching who haven't read the letter yet, here is uh, a relevant extract, the, the crucial extract. Brexit must happen, you say. The UK must leave and do so without further undue delay. A commitment to a second referendum would be toxic to our bedrock Labour voters. Now, correct. I, correct. I suppose one of the questions out of that is, are you not likely to lose more seats to the Lib Dems than to anybody else if you, don't, if, you go, if you don't go in the other direction? No, not at all. I mean, when you look at the polling based on present figures, it is clear that, for example, in, in David's seat in uh, South Shields that used to represent, that would go all the seats in Sunderland all the seats in Barnsley, across Wolverhampton, across Stoke, and many more. And those Labour Leave voters are likely to go to the Brexit party. So the, the danger for the party, and this isn't just about an electoral calculation. So how, sorry, how, how many seats would Labour lose, do you think, to the Brexit party, if, if you go ahead in the, in the, in the second well, referendum direction? Well, one of the polls suggests it's something like 40 plus. So the thing, I, uh, and also to the Tories as well in that mix, but we would be losing in our heartland seats. And this isn't just about you know, electoral advantage. This is actually goes to the heart of what the Labour Party is about. If we do not speak uh, for the working class voices of Britain, then what's the point of the Labour Party? Can I ask you a little bit more about this letter? Because 26 Labour MPs, as I said, and you say you've been speaking privately to more than 26, mm. is this a block of Labour MPs who would now vote for a deal if a deal comes back? I think those people who signed the letter would like to still have the opportunity to vote on a deal. And don't forget that... Um, uh, when uh, Theresa May was, you know, finally forced to stand down, we were in discussions about what the withdrawal agreement would be like and changes to the political declaration. But I think it's also about us basically trying to be heard uh, in the Parliamentary Labour Party and elsewhere about real concerns about what our party is all about, but also the people that we speak for in our constituencies. And, and that hasn't been given, I think, uh, the due respect that it deserves. Last time round, I think only three Labour MPs were still voting for the Theresa May deal, of which you were one. Now that we are that much closer to a no deal exit and a different Tory leader, do you think that number is bound to go up by a considerable margin? I think it will go up, but, you know, I've been to uh, this situation many times before. I believe that the only way to stop no deal is to support a deal and for us to have an orderly uh, Brexit. And the only way to do that is to support a deal. So I am, sure. despite everything that's going on, I am still optimistic and hopeful that. that Parliament will do the job. If I was uh, Boris Johnson or Jeremy Hunt and won the Conservative leadership, an unlikely thought, the first things I would do is go to Brussels to try and get some kind of alteration or change of some kind with mm -hmm. the withdrawal agreement. And the second thing I do, I would go and talk to Caroline Flint and the other people who have signed that letter and say, in those circumstances, can I rely on your votes? Because if the answer is yes, then you overwhelm the relatively small number of hardcore committed uh, Tory Remainers and therefore the, the deal could finally get through and the country could avoid no deal. In order to avoid no deal, would you talk to a Johnson or a Hunt or whoever? I would talk to anybody to stop no deal from any party. And actually, I think the underlying point in which you make, Andrew, which is correct, whoever becomes Tory leader, mm. the truth is they need to get behind a deal. And, that's and they the need a parliamentary majority. Yes, and they need a parliamentary majority. So whether it's Jeremy Hunt or Boris Johnson, they need to get behind a deal. I do believe, as I think Rory Stewart indicated during earlier hustings where he played a part, that essentially elements of the deal we have already got on the table, so to speak, will still be going forward. There may be some slight changes. The fact that we are having a new Prime Minister in EU language is an event, so that might open the door to some more discussions. But I think we are at a stage now that we really need to consider the health of the nation. I think the health of the nation needs us to agree a deal and move on. So the next Prime Minister going to Brussels and thinking about trying to get a deal can, as it were, bank or at least hope for 
up to 26 Labour MPs in the, in the, in the voting lobbies when push comes to shove. Well, I don't think anybody should bank on anything in, in sure. this game that we are playing, and it is being treated by some quarters as a game which isn't helpful. Mm. Um, but I think, yes, I think anybody who is going to be the Tory leader should think about how they reach out, not just to individuals like myself and the other 25 who signed that letter, but also, again, to the Labour Party, because even in the um, Peterborough um, by-election, Andrew, uh, our message in our scripts to voters, particularly those where we, where th people were thinking of voting for Brexit, was once we have Brexit, this candidate won't offer you anything on the issues of NHS jobs and so on. That indicated to me that there is still within the party leadership an acknowledgement that, that actually Brexit is going to happen. And I and want us to get onto those issues of the NHS and jobs, because at the moment... We're not getting a hearing on those matters either. Similarly, reading my way through the letter and the, and the quote that I put on the screen just now, I take it that those 26 MPs would vote against a second referendum if there's another vote on the subject in the House of Commons. Oh, I think that is pretty clear. Um, and because we do believe that, you know, it's not democratic to ask Leave voters to vote twice to prove themselves. But also, look, we have to respect democracy I think we have to bring the country together. I think out there, outside the buzz of Westminster and outside the media, there are both Leave and Remain voters who want to see a progress being made. And let's get to the second stage where some of the real deals and the real negotiations will have to take place. So this is a really big political moment, actually, because what this suggests is that it's much less likely that we have another referendum and it's, it is likelier that we have a, a, an agreement of some kind uh, before we leave the EU. I very much hope, Andrew, that is the outcome. I, I believe Parliament has not served the people in the way it's gone about this business over the last thousand days. And there have always been, as I've said, hardline Brexiteers and, and Remainers for whom no deal was ever going to be good enough. And you would vote with Boris Johnson and against Jeremy Corbyn to make that happen? I would vote for a deal, a deal that has the support of the EU27 and the government if I felt it ticked the boxes that I voted mm -hmm. for a deal before. And I voted twice for a deal before. But let's be clear One. about this. Boris Johnson has also been in the chamber voting with Jeremy Corbyn, as has Jacob Rees-Mogg, when I haven't been. So we've all been in a situation where we've been in the lobbies with Boris. The question is, why are we in the lobbies? What are we voting Absolutely for? And I'm voting point. to leave with an orderly Brexit. Absolutely a fair point. One last <laughs> question. If, right up against the end of the process, and despite everything you hope, there isn't a deal, mm. do you vote for, uh, do, you, do you go with no deal, a no deal exit or no Brexit? I won't be voting to revoke Article 50. So that means a no-deal Brexit, if that's what has to happen. If that is what's where we end up, that is where I will begin. Be. Caroline.